Hello and welcome to the PC Security Channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today we'll be taking a look at Kaspersky Internet Security, the latest version, presumably for 2021. As usual, we'll be conducting a thorough examination of this, testing it against some real malware, and we'll also look at specific components like System Watcher and how they react to ransomware. But before we dive in, I think it's important to go over the product and the perspective that it offers. I think these days a lot of companies are going more and more for features since you already seem to be getting a somewhat decent AV with Windows Defender on Windows 10. Kaspersky has been advertising their anti-hacking a lot lately, so if you go into settings, you'll see that under network, they have a lot of components involved. This obviously also bites both ways, meaning that Kaspersky does intercept your entire network activity in order to make sure that somebody else isn't intercepting it. I think I will make a dedicated video on whether or not Kaspersky is a rootkit technically and if you should be concerned, but for this video suffice to say, I think that's going to be the future of hardcore security applications regardless because they can't really assess every kind of attack unless they are effectively a man in the middle examining everything that's going on. Maybe there are better ways to do it, content for security talk, but for now we'll focus on Kaspersky. Now, most of the general components haven't really changed. Advanced threat protection is obviously quite interesting. You've got application control and system watcher. These are the zero day components or the main components that Kaspersky uses to protect against unknown malware. In the past, I've been quite impressed with system watcher's ability to block ransomware. We'll see if that carries through with this version. But let's be honest, there are no real groundbreaking changes here. But given Kaspersky's track record, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But malware is evolving all the time, so we will find out if it still ain't broke. There's always another area to talk about with it being based in Russia. They're actually, I think, in the process of moving their headquarters. So again, something I'm not personally too concerned about. I focus more on the technical aspects of the product. But if you work for the US government, you are not allowed to use it, which makes sense. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, if you're in the US government, you should only use stuff made in the US. Makes you wonder why no one thought of that with the election systems. <laughs> but let's move on. So in order to test this out, I have a lot of malware. We have it in a shared remote location. So this is going to be similar to a lateral attack from within the network. We have 1,367 items collected recently. These are malware samples, so they can be anything. We'll just try them out using our testing tool Malix and see how Kaspersky responds. I've already changed the settings so that it is only going to block these attacks and not disinfect the system. So some of you that are concerned that disinfection effectively locks the system down, preventing anything from happening that should not take place here. We will also open Task Manager so you can take a look at the resource usage in real time. So without further ado, let's get testing. Now we're already getting a lot of alerts from Kaspersky saying that these applications are being blocked, deleted, stopped from starting. That's good news. We'll see how the test continues. So far, it's holding on to a proactive detection of 100%, so nothing has been missed. We also have another window open, so in case anything is missed, we'll be able to monitor the changes that are being carried out on the system. That is possible thanks to some of our amazing Discord members who've been contributing to Malix and helping us improve the testing capabilities. Now, obviously, you don't want to sit here all day, so let's speed it up, shall we? Looks like our test is finally complete and Kaspersky is still ringing up with notifications, of course, but the final proactive detection is 100%, so we had no misses whatsoever. So hey, if it wasn't broke before, it certainly ain't broke now. Now, while this is a very good result, it's not wholly unexpected, 
given Kaspersky's track record. They are definitely very good when it comes to signatures, but we also want to see what would happen if it was subjected to a brand new zero day ransomware. So in order to kind of emulate that type of a situation, what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and disable the file antivirus effectively turning off its signature component. Now, normally I would leave something like application control turned on since this is also a zero day component and it monitors the activity of all applications that are installed on the system. But I'm also going to turn this off specifically for this test because we've done this test in the past with application control turned on, but I would like to see what System Watcher especially is able to do. Now we're going to go back and as you can see, we have System Watcher. We're going to leave it turned on. This is a specific component designed for ransomware and screen lockers. We're going to put it to the test and see how it functions. So in order to do that, I'm going to get some ransomware on the system right now. So we have a really good collection that I'm just going to reference. So we're gonna get started with Wasted Locker, which is one of the infamous threats that recently hit Garmin and cost them millions. So we're gonna try this out on the system see what happens. Keep in mind we have the signature component disabled, otherwise this would obviously be instantly detected. It's a well-known threat, but I want to see how their system watcher component reacts to this and whether or not it's able to stop it on its own because that is what would happen if we had a brand new ransomware. So we're effectively waiting to see if anything is launched and if our files are encrypted, but that is not the case since as we check in reports, wastedlocker.exe was detected just based off of this one component. Now we will try another ransomware called Black Claw, which is also a fairly recent variant. So we're gonna grab it right here and execute it on the system. We'll see how long it takes for System Watcher to pick it up. Now keep in mind these are reactive detections, so the application is executing successfully, like we are getting these into memory, and it's Kaspersky's monitoring system that is then picking them up and saying, okay, this is doing something suspicious and then terminating it and trying to delete the file in some cases. Now, so far we haven't gotten any notifications for Black Claw, so we'll wait and see if it's actually able to encrypt our data, keeping a close watch on that. But as it appears, it has already been terminated. So I'm going to just refresh the activities here. And as you can see, there you go. Object was terminated and um, deleted. So if we refresh the desktop, it's gone now. We're gonna try a couple more just in case. So I'm gonna try Armage, a new variant. We'll see what results we have here. We're getting pretty much instantaneous detection in a lot of cases, even in this case. So. That is interesting. I'm not sure if that is because of the uh, Kaspersky security cloud. So I'm gonna try disabling that as well because we really wanna see what this component can do on its own. Now, in order to make extra sure that Kaspersky is not contacting its cloud, I'm just going to enforce a network lockdown. So we do not have access to the internet anymore on the system. So we're going to try, make sure that that is indeed the case. Even though it says connected, I'll just show you that that's not the case. Um, I just enforced the lockdown, so it's gonna take a while for Windows to show up, but there you go. We can't really access the internet. And we'll see if that makes any difference in terms of whether or not it's able to catch these behaviors. Now, if we open up Process Explorer, as you can see, wastedlocker.exe just got terminated. So it does seem like after a certain time period, even without the help of the cloud, Kaspersky is able to make that determination that this is ransomware and terminate it. Now I'm gonna try a brand new sample this time. I'm gonna try Shade. This is another ransomware from Russia. Again, what we're trying to see here is if Kaspersky is making the detections based on behavior locally, or if it's getting any kind of signature help from the cloud. But as you can see, right now we're completely disconnected from the internet, um, but it's still making the detection. So it will be interesting to see if it does that for Shade. As you can see, we have the process loaded in memory right now, starting its activity. So it's opening up command prompt, trying to encrypt our data. And there you go, a detection alert from Kaspersky saying that it's found suspicious activity 
characteristic of malware and it wants us to disinfect and restart the computer. So even this activity was picked up and was picked up fairly early. So none of our data is yet encrypted. As a realistic user, you would click disinfect and restart. And if we do that, I'm pretty sure that uh, the malware is going to be taken care of. In order to do so, it's going to do a full scan of the system memory and lock down the system. And there we go. Within the first few seconds, Shade has been terminated. And if we take a look at our documents, they're still safe. We can access them because of the advanced disinfection, but everything is still here. And advanced disinfection essentially locks down the system, preventing anything from starting. So even if the ransomware was active, it wouldn't be able to continue launching any new processes or doing any other damage. So again, really solid results for Kaspersky. If you'd like to buy any Kaspersky product, please use the affiliate link in the description. It will give you a discount and helps us out massively as well and supports the work that we do. The test, by the way, is totally independent and the views expressed are purely our own. As mentioned, I will be making another video specifically talking about the rootkit aspects of this program if you're interested in that kind of thing. I'll also be taking a look at Bitdefender's new version very soon, so don't forget to subscribe to the PC Security channel. And hey, if you're a business and you'd like to get any kind of consulting help in order to test out your security configuration, feel free to reach out on our website, thepcsecuritychannel.com or tpsc.tech. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, Stay informed, stay secure.